Unlock your expectations. <laughs> Fuck what they want you to be. Fuck the box they put you in, the coffin they built. When you were born, the ceiling made of glass they said could never be broken. Fuck the system. The noose made loose by every paper mache laid in a wallet it gorges on. Fuck those gender norms society loves to preach as gospel. For no God of mind could judge one self-expression and even unholy. Preach! Fuck the wage you say we don't deserve. Fuck the patriarchy we buy into because boys will be boys. Nah, you see, we're aware of the truth. But petrified of change, for to them, equality is oppression. Fuck the picture posted with your black homie because black lives mattered for a few hours instead of forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Fuck your commodification of our bodies, perversion of our culture and appropriation of our ideas. You see, you ain't massive and you never been. Fuck the history you champion as your own. Written lies penned from the dirt. From shadow chains and trails wet with salt and water. Fuck the pity. They peddle as compassion. Fuck the ghetto hair you call fashion. Because we did it better. <laughs> Fuck both misconceptions. The one they created for you and the one you created for yourself. Fuck the expectations. Woo! I don't like giving my, my poems or my prose and titles. I feel like I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't start them with titles at all. I just write it and then it's done. But this one's pretty important. As the seasons pass, fleeting in length and ripe with disorder, we struggle to grow with the responsibility of being a part of an earth. A people so beautiful and so evil, male privilege built upon oppression sown deep within this melanin fed fat with a spoon so silver that being brown can hide the male hypocrisy. We are born into this fatal fraternity whose place was carved upon the world with violence unbeknownst to this existence, all in the name of what it means to be a man. You see, your Bible taught us young that mothers, sisters, lovers are hewn from a man's rib instead of by his side, a Lord forbid, before a man ever drew breath. Red and black lettering curated by the weak-hearted and oppressive masquerading behind the veil of our fragile male ego created long ago, you see. We drown your cries with legislation. I said we drown your cries with legislation, your suffering with capitalism, your rights with our own, and the system purges on, bleaching the knowledge of our ancestors, erasing the history of mothers, daughters, sisters, and lovers until the nerve we maintained to keep our comfort is forever more. We talk as if we know. Nah, I'm going to repeat that. We talk as if we know. We walk as if we've given light. We sing as if it were us that heard those stars are too high to reach and them clouds ain't for you, so why don't you stay at home and take care of the kids? As true as my words may be, they come from a voice, a place of privilege built upon the wombs and backs of the women around this earth. It is time I said, it is time we unpack our masculinity that has poisoned not only our minds, but our hearts. Toxic masculinity. You see, the first step we can take as men, as people, the first step we can take is understanding that every and any experience not of our own is just as powerful, just as valid, and just as precious as our own.
This one has a title. I named it Hotel California. <laughs> the slit widened by blade against jugular opens at the crows, murmuring about blood loss and weak hearts. Nauseous for my nerves, knew it wasn't supposed to go out like this, but who in life chooses their own execution? I wish I could crawl through the gash in my neck and along my spine, moving red matter and breaking bone to emerge from this body bag made from atoms and emotion anew. Shedding skin like sin siphoned off the false crown I wear upon these locks, washing away the blood of yesterday with rubbing alcohol, careful not to remove the melanin like rain upon chalk ridden sidewalks in the south side, my side. Leaking life force onto concrete, soft beats turn to whisper as the street lights turn on. I, you see, I was supposed to be home before the fluorescent cast out, but instead I lay broken, broken amongst the wreckage of this world that was never really ours, you see. We are built to be torn asunder. With us inside, I guess patience worn thin, wishing for those better tomorrows. You see, it couldn't stop the rock and ill will, so forgive me if I check out of this establishment earlier than most. Before the morning tide spills sunlight amongst the ruin and dried optimism, you see. Forgive me if I check out of this establishment earlier than most. This one has a title too. <laughs> it's called There Is No Cure. Silence settles over my heart like dust upon old artifacts worn weary by the passage of time without use or purpose, arousing low whispers from friends whose faces are painted Picasso's of pity and admiration, as if their sudden outward display of emotion in this waning instant could placate pain and rid me of disdain. Nah, fuck you. You who held your head high as if Midas's touch had been bestowed upon your right while your left turned whatever it touched into rock in hard places. You who spawn broken and bitter boulders that have tendency to crush hope and pin outstretched limbs reaching for anything to lessen the pain. There is no cure for what I suffer from. There are no magic words that it could ease the grief, the vice grip upon my soul. No liquid elixir that would elicit the abolition of old levees and sand barriers that surround my psyche like slave shackles on wooden ships. No stroke of hindsight masquerading as goodwill or remorse could spark the fire that had burned within me. Once driving steel and soul like coal powers a locomotive. I am alone in this, my friend. Cast away toward modern purgatory like gutter children in Sinclair's jungle. You see, there are no hands to grasp, no gospel to preach, no love to hold, not from some omnipotent deity or earthly prophet, nor from your own morality driven conscience, bent like light to fit some manic dystopia. You see, there are only roses that smell like shit. <laughs> and expectations that never meet reality's handshake. There is no cure for what I suffer from. <laughs> Pen flickers over notes. Jotted in doctor scribble and dented on pressed paper mache, grown from rhyme schemes and stanzas, structured by emotional cement and shattered pieces of bone and heart, as if a coroner's van were called to the scene, complete with morticians commissioned to scrape sad brain and seared flesh from concrete in a, in a vain attempt to save a soul that is too far gone. I will let you know music has become my only confidant.
akin to an outgoing friend juxtaposed against a societal outcast who hates crowds and conversations that stem from booze. My mind recites verses as though they were whispered through grapevines and over bated breath. While chaotically written characters aim to postpone what seems to be an inevitable freefall. As if this substance induced cathartic repetition was my own personal purgatory. There was once a time my being burned with the desire to erase this face from our plane's existence, to rip this vinegar voice from its home beneath my jaw.